lifting up your soul, so you're welcome, son. I spent rhymes for 2111, lifting up your soul, so you're not strong. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to episode 199 of my Knowledge is Love Astrology podcast. And I am joined tonight by the amazing, I got to run down some of this list, Vivian Chauvet, an interstellar Arcturian avatar, a teacher, a podcast host, a radio show host, She's worked on documentaries. She's got a book series and really is helping the collective ascend and find our sovereign beings and our inner light and really a transformative healer. Vivian, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? Oh, uh, you are so very welcome. Thank you for having me. I am doing fantastic and it's a joy to be in your presence, Eric. And I want to thank everyone tuning in, listening, getting the energy and feel this beautiful experience that we're about to co-create. So it's a joy. Ah, I love that. See, and let me tell you something. This Vivian, already I knew off the bat we had a connection. She is, you know, I have to tie in some astrology, a Taurus ascendant like my wife, a Gemini son like my firstborn, and a Scorpio moon like the Taylor twins. What else could I ask for? And I'm a Scorpio rising, Vivian. So, I mean, it's just like, oh, I just, I feel the goods. We're going to get to the energy that is upon us now and this new energy after the solar eclipse. Hello to everyone in the chat. We'll get to your questions in a little bit. But Vivian, I'd like to start off, and I sometimes we'll, you know, bring this up with different guests, but it's really fascinating for me to kind of understand who was 10 year old or the young version of Miss Vivianne? What was she doing? What, what did she dream about? And did she know she had these gifts? Well, let's take a journey in space and time because that aspect of myself still coexists with the aspect of who I am today. So 10 year old Vivian rediscovering the earth journey. So my dream was of the stars. I've always have my head in the stars, the connection, feeling the planet, feeling the vibration on the cosmic level. Mm. So my dream have always been to reconnect, to create that conscious bridge of interconnection. I would would love to watch a lot of sci-fi movies and a Star Wars series and oh, yeah. close encounter of the third kind and and Star Men and all of these classics <laughs> that to me were like vitamin C for my soul. It felt so much more natural to me mm. than watching anything, any kids show, anything more like intergalactic, you know, interstellar with sp spaceship and aliens and all of it. That's what was really driving my 10 year old because it's always been a part of me, Eric. So yes, the answer is yes. I've always, I've always known who I was. Mm. I was more busy discovering what being a human felt like, mm. be able to observe how things moves here, what motivates people, how adults interact with each other, how children interact with each other, how the earth feels. So think of it this way, the 10 year old in me, even though I look like a 10 year old child, typical human, he was more of this cosmic being discovering what a 10 year old felt like. And it was always through my eyes, the eyes of this beautiful advanced intergalactic being that I am. And the full spectrum of my gifts have been more of an ongoing journey. So they have evolved, grow and expand alongside with me. And what is the beauty of this, Eric, is that my Octarian delegation, my team with my Octarian father, was really carefully coached me alongside with each stages of my human discovery 
Uh, five to the age of 10, then when I went into my 20s, and then later on in life, in every step of the journey, every stages of evolution, discovery, you know, events, situations, my team always been there to coach me each aspect. So wow. I was never a typical 10 year old, you know, for me, it's, it's all about being in the presence of all of ET beings and ships and even even uh, even in my playful time with my brother it was all about you know these kind of interactions so i've never been a typical uh, child or a typical a uh, teenager or a typical young adult it's always been this beautiful octarine being discovering the human experience <laughs> wow so i know as a collective and as, as souls we choose our family and choose our parents and it's part of our evolution. In your lineage, your mom and dad, and you mentioned your brother, do any of them have some of your similar gifts? Or did your earthly parents do anything to help train you or recognize or acknowledge your gifts? Well, in their own ways. Um, so I do have a brother, only one. one. And he is gifted in his own ways. I remember mm -hmm. as a child, he's... He always had the ability to see uh, spirit on the other side. He would see either pets who've passed on or family members, or he would see also the soul of soldiers from different world wars, like World War II in particular. That's fascinating. Uh, yes, and, and I remember him talking about, well, this being is there, and, and, and he's always been a great protector for me, you know, to, to him, I'm only his little sister. And, mm -hmm. and this is how he sees me. And he sees that I had special needs in a sense, in the sense that my physical body was not as strong as an average kid. And he would always be the great protector. And so when he would see this being, he would talk about it with me. And he would tell me what he sees and what is the purpose of them being there. And, he, and, and then in his teenage hood, this is where you would see uh, souls who haven't crossed over, uh, souls who maybe got lost in the astral plane. And oh, wow. yeah, and he will tell them, hey, you're just stuck. Just keep going. You know, I'll show you. And, it, and he did that for a long time. So each of my family members have their own unique abilities. Uh, my mom is extremely intuitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, she could have become famously known if she really wanted to Aww. her gifts were off the chart people would line up to come and ask her for guidance or readings or what does she you know her ability to see aspect aspect of the future right um, and and my dad well my dad has always been this um conduit where today even to this day eric mm. they still communicate with many different intergalactic groups they come and communicate with them and of course my delegations and so you can tell that each and every one of them hold their own space their own uniqueness alongside with me and i think that what makes us very unique in a sense that our the lineage that we chose was by soul association soul partnership and it was a long beautiful collaboration that still coexists to this day wow this i love that that is so awesome <laughs> yeah you know families and um the lineage and our dna and you know sometimes you can see for me when i work with uh parents and their children you know you can see in the birth chart different connections through generations and it's extremely fascinating so we just went through quite a fascinating run march 25th the libra lunar eclipse april 1st the start of mercury retrograde until april 25th everybody watching mercury <laughs> retrograde in aries which is kind of helpful because aries can be very fast and impulsive and it's good to be introspective and slow down a bit and then this past Monday, the mm -hmm. total Aries solar eclipse, you know, dealing with all this energy in Aries, Mercury retrograde, Venus, Chiron, the wounded healer, mm -hmm. the North Node. Um, what do you think humanity is to really learn from this new energy, this new beginning 
that has come upon us. What what is your Arcturian Federation and connections? What information have you been able to, you know, I guess download or understand to share for us to, you know, help us to move forward? Absolutely. Great question, Eric. And thank you for reminding us of all the astrological alignment and especially leading up to the solar eclipse that we're still feeling the ripple effect. <laughs> so Arcturians, we work very closely with solar energies. Mm. When there is the central sun, the great central sun and all the high council, mm. the solar deities. We're very close to that frequencies. So one thing I love to do personally is to directly ask the solar beings for showing us the synergy, the meaning beyond, behind all of these solar gamma light coming through mm. onto the planet and there's such a precision of a conjunction. Now you talk about Aries and then Mercury retrograde, retrograde and others. But one of the things that the solar beings have shown me personally, Eric, is that think of that solar eclipse as a new breath of life that was brought back to the planet. Mm -hmm. It is also designed to help the earth to shift out of a very old, limited paradigm. It's almost like we're removing uh, an old shell off of the earth. And for all of us on the planet, it's also giving an opportunity even to the subconscious field where there's new opportunity to resolve past history or past old Akashic record stories, attachments, mm. what has been really holding you back. And the field become much more vibrant, much more, um, how could I say that, responsive to your thoughts, to your desire to move forward. So the solar energy has this high quality to help us evolve, to move us past the certain barriers or limitation, whether it's emotional, karmic, genetic, whether it's historical, whether it's mental construct, we're mm -hmm. moving into a new paradigm, a new template of living. And this new paradigm is really pushing us off. If you feel that the fiery energy of Aries, and it's about this new breath, this fire energy to the solar light, that is really here to help us shift forward. So on a personal note, I like to share personal experience so it can inspire everybody. Yeah. I have noticed that my subconscious archives have been very active in, in the astral plane, or you call dream state. Right. I've been shown aspect of my own subconscious archive in symbology that makes sense to me. And I knew that that was an opportunity that was given to me so I can resolve some of these old analogy. And I was able to move through that with a lot more ease, with more grace, faster. There's a quicken energies. There's a more a cohesive feel that allow us to move through that. And I spoke with many clients before the solar eclipse, during and after. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have been feeling that before and something has been preparing us. We can already feel even our, in our body a certain acceleration movement, whether it's contractions, whether it's, you know, diet, whether it's the physical symptoms or emotional symptoms. And once we pass through the eyes of, so to speak, of the solar eclipse, there's a sense of relief, a sense of renewal, a sense of expansion that will continue over the next few months. And I would say, all the way even to the summer solstice. There's, we are entering that corridor of deep acceleration. And I would say even your thought forms, your desires, your intentions are going to start to manifest a little bit faster. There's a quicken in the pace. We can feel that. So, you know, in a nutshell, trust that the solar present is there to help you evolve. It's like a metamorphosis stage that's going on for the planet, for everyone, every sentient life form, the grid system, the timeline, of, the timeline of ascension, all of it. And you feel it. We invite you to feel it in your body, in your heart, mm. in your vibration. And it's going to reflect more and more. So it's an aspect of what we've been seeing in terms of support system 
coming back in a form of solar energy, that new fire, solar breath of life that is coming in. And it's a much welcome breath, much needed one, so to speak. <laughs> well, you know, as you were saying that, I, you know, for me, I, my third eye has, my heart chakra and third eye have always, you know, have been open for a long time. But I was always so heavy mental. And I know for me, and I'll get to this, uh, rewind back to this in, in a little bit, because I have a question to ask you about it. But I know after my near-death experience, I became much more less head and more heart. But as you were speaking, the one thing I was visualizing that's so fantastic, the sextile between Pisces and Taurus with this Aries energy and experience with this new beginning and this solar eclipse, and Aries, well, at the same time, we're dealing with the exact conjunction today and the end of Ramadan and, you know, happy holiday to all those celebrating. The Mars conjuncts Saturn and Pisces. And of course, we have Neptune there. Mars and Saturn are there. Sorry, Saturn and Neptune are in Pisces till February 2026. And then at the same time, sextiling in Taurus, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And so I put that all together to ask you, because I've been seeing this, and as you talked about with your clients previous and before, you know, this energy building up where I tell people, we, you know, we've got to step up and walk to that Aries North energy, North Node energy and be the initiators, be brave and courageous and assert ourselves properly and be the leaders of our own lives. And I think of the Jupiter, Uranus and Taurus about increasing our self-worth and reestablishing our connection to the trees and the plants and nature, right? To the earth, right? Even the crystals and gems. And then the, the Saturn and Neptune and Pisces and even this Mars conjunction, you know, really making sure Saturn and Pisces that we're honoring our spiritual daily routines and practices and spiritual discipline. And so I want you to share with the audience how important you feel it is to have your da daily spiritual practice. And at the same time, that grounding and earthing and the connection and the wisdom that we get from the trees and nature. How important is that for our lives and our ascension? Actually, it changes everything. And I'm really happy that you mentioned it this way because I always found very fascinating how the consciousness of these beautiful celestial beings called planets can come together and form either a conjunction or a square or an alignment to give everyone or all life around them an opportunity to evolve. So what caught my attention is the presence of Saturn and Jupiter together. Uh, the great master, the release of the karma, the discipline, the <clears throat> life lesson learning, and the expansion that Jupiter brings in the next level of consciousness, metamorphosis within it. So that ties up to us as an image we want to give you. So visualize a beautiful, vibrant, healthy, cosmic tree of life. Mm. So the more you nurture your roots, honoring yourself, honoring your boundaries, honoring your, your connections to all relations, rediscovering the guardians, the stewards in you of this planet, regardless of your point of origin, whether you're an Octurian, a Syrian, an angelic being, a fairy being, it makes no difference. Once we are together as a community of light on a planet, we have the responsibility to really hold the space with each other in harmony with the entire ecosystem. Uh, we're here to really work with the resources, be in sync with the tree nations, with life, the animal kingdom. We need to honor. And that it is for us is returning in the source point of reverence for all life. So the importance of nurturing your roots, allow yourself to ground in these new ways into loving presence, to be more conscious, more centered, more present, allow you to better understand the next step of your feet. Where are your feet stepping onto? And where are you on your journey? So allow Mother Gaia and the sacred elementals, the grid, the core of Gaia to become in alignment with your core. 
and to feel that you belong here as long as you set foot on the planet. You are your presence is celebrated, needed, welcomed by Gaia herself in a multitude of life that you are part of. And that is directly reflective in the quality of expansion in your cosmic tree of life. That means your branches can expand infinitely mm. because you have a support system. You're honoring your body template. You're honoring the body template of Gaia. So it allows you in reality a greater sense of presence being able to expand in consciousness, to feel how your body structures evolve. You become a clear conduit, allowing more frequencies of light to come through you, through your roots, into the earth. You want to be of service? You want to know, how can I do more? How can I be of service? Well, it yes. starts here, right? It starts right here in nurturing your heart, the very heart of your cosmic tree. Yeah. Because as you know, honoring the your heart and the heart of your cosmic tree, you are able to honor everything along the, along the way and being able to be in that presence, to be able to cultivate higher standard of vibrations, to be able to monitor where do you spend your energy the most, where are you invested the most, Mm. right and yeah. then redefine the quality of your meditation or simply be in what we call this conscious <coughs> meditative state and this conscious me meditative state you don't mm. have to go deep into meditation just feel coming back yourself into a zero point feel your being allow yourself to reset uh, reset your energy so how important it is, Eric, all of this to say extremely because you are redefining your structures, your foundation. You no longer be sway or disbalanced or cut off balance mentally, emotionally, physically because your roots are strong, solid. And this self-worth, self-confidence, yeah. also that uh, very much so, would you say? Totally, you know, and I, um, I've been advising this to, you know, my podcast audience and my clients for a while now, um, because I know for me, I'm about doing the work, you know, I, my whole mantra, my whole life, I would always, uh, you know, relate it to sports, but in my own perspective, in my own journey, I would say hashtag deep water faith. You know, because one thing I've never done, I'm far from perfect, made a lot of mistakes in my life, but I've always had a, a big heart, humble spirit, and, you know, tried to live by the mantra, you know, I treat people how I'd like to be treated, but I never play games with God, you know, and I wanted to ask you, <clears throat> and we're going to get to everybody in the chat for, you know, in, in a second, so definitely come with your questions. But with this time period of Pluto and Aquarius in the next 20 years, um, I just had a friend who had a, a, a baby born. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that they're, you know, the 11 year olds and younger, the, the, my little Neptune Pisces people, they were coined the alpha generation. And now with the Pluto Aquarius, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know how long that's gonna last, but they're starting to say that this is going to be the beta generation. But what are you um, sensing and downloading and being shown in the galactic? This new, these new beautiful beings that are coming to our planet, the Pluto Aquarius. And I always think of the opposite, which is Leo, which, like you said before, kind of leads us to where we need to be as a collective, right? The human design prophecy is that we're leaving the solar plexus and going to the heart chakra in 2027. But for the people who are pregnant or planning families in the future, where do you think they're coming from or what type of energies can we see in these new amazing beings um, that can be coming here the next 20 years? Well, we like to honor every generation yes. of souls who have come, the pioneers before us. Those who've come in time of great conflict, heaviness, density, depression, all kind of historical moment. So I always like to start here 
and then go back to the new generations. So wherever you hold a space with us right now, whichever generational timeline you have returned, we honor you because you have been the marker, the pioneers to lead the way to the next generations. So my generation, I'm right, I'm right the anchor point. I'm right, I'm the bridge, I'm the great bridge between those, the pioneers, the generational timeline before and those who come after me and with the new ones, right in the middle, I'm the sacred bridge. So one thing we have observed in terms of the soul energy, those who are returning to the planet, you know, the younger generations, you know, young children, 10, 11 years old, eight, seven, those who are coming to born. Uh, I also know some clients who are also expecting new ones coming through, which is exciting, the energy. Yeah. One thing that we are observing is that these souls are coming with a stronger sense of that energy. There's no more of these veils or heavy lifting they have to do. They come right in a time when the grid system of the earth is shifting and supporting them better to bring very direct message. So the frequency and pulses they hold, the light carrier in them, it's going to directly impact right in east the most there's no more you know filtering system or you know waiting till the global consciousness reach a certain point we have reached that point already right well so all of the assistance we're getting whether it's those who are going to reincarnate directly into a physical form and those who are also chosen to stay in their intergalactic forms or pure consciousness. Well, the difference is that we have a greater impact. We can make a much more direct impact that will sustain the reascension timeline. I'd like to give you an, to give everyone an example of this. Um, lately, I have a friend who forwarded me a link to one of the social media. It was a video of a, a mother who was talking with her probably 10, 11 year old son and asking, what is God? Oh what yes, I've seen that, that young boy, yes. You? Well, thank you, Eric. Well, for those of you who haven't, here's, here's the essence of it. That respond directly to your question, Eric, mm -hmm. is that young boy, the clarity, the distinction of the wording, it was a clear, direct, impactful reminder. There's no more separation between you and the ATs or the aliens beings mm -hmm. or you and the planet. Everything is source. Everything, every particle, every object, every aspect cr contain that creation seed, create that aspect of the creator. So that young boy message to me was really about melting these invisible barriers put in place by either manipulations, cultural background, historical, whether it's your upbringing, whether it's, you know, blood lineage, ancestral, genetic markers, all of this, we are transcending all of it. And we are finally returning to understand that there's no difference between the intergalactic and the earth humans and, you know, flowers or animals or trees or a star or a galaxy. We're starting to really understand that we are returning to supreme source, that prime creator of energy, that omnipotence, omnipresence. And I think a part of an aspect of what these younger generations are bringing in is to really accelerate that it is time to come back in that oneness. And we need to release our considerations or these invisible barriers we carry, whether it's separations, whether it's in our inability, unworthiness, you know, I'm just a human trapping my mind around it. Now, this is a program telling you you're just a human with your mind wrapping around it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so it said just stay open. Stay open with open mind and open heart. When these messages come at such a pure, direct level, you want to know what these ET wants? They want woods. They're going to get woods. Share, you know, share with each other. There's no more difference between you and me or them and us and this planet or this galaxy is we're coming back of understanding how much we share our commonality and that, that we are part of the creator. And so to us, it's initiating a greater reversal of thought system on the planet. Meaning instead of to identify yourself as a separate being that is trying or 
attempting or wrapping your mind about all of it is just allow the gateway of your heart open up again and says i rekindle today the remembrance that i am this essence of light this eternal being yeah. having a momentary in time a human experience or an intergalactic experience or an elemental experience really is it's time to return to that identity that yeah. profound nature that we are is it not uh yes you know you just it's, you're speaking to my heart and you just say it in a nicer way than i do but i, I love it and it's so true vivian so honey i've got so much going through my brain right now but let's go to the chat you want to take a couple of questions say hello to some people yes see what's going on Yes, yes. I'd like to read the very first question that came through from Alana. Alana asks, I have been feeling deep learning. It is difficult to qualify in words. However, I can feel the change and I know I am different. What practical advice can you give to help me deepen my connection? Mm. Mm. Uh, it's a beautiful question. So first, I want to acknowledge, Alana, that you have been feeling these deeper sense of learning, inner discovering, you know, that are beyond words. And I can understand it's so sometimes challenging to quantify everything in verbal languages. So I can feel, I feel you right now. Being different, it's simply embracing that part of you that is shifting out of the 3D program or what is you know, consider as the norm. So we are redefining those boundaries. Yes. There's no more difference. It's more rekindling with the uniqueness. So I'd like to invite you to shift the energy from I'm different to I'm embracing my uniqueness. That's a positive change. And that's very practical right now. Number one. Number two, what kind of practical advice to give you as you are seemingly already so well on your journey? It, I would simply say, Continue to trust, feel, cultivate more and more that inner deep connection. I trust, I'm learning and expanding. Allow yourself to use the cosmic tree analogy that we share with all of you earlier. Yeah. Nurture your trees, your inner roots, I mean, nurture your roots and allow yourself to be more and more in sync trusting explicitly that new emergence of guidance and learning in you there's nothing to mentalize it's all about the complete experience even through your body as a conduit mm. that's so true that's beautiful yeah alana that's actually my wife and she's she oh. has been doing some amazing transformation uh since uranus came to taurus and her ascendant starting in 2018 so i know you understand that experience and energy and um yeah it's beautiful so let's uh let's take another uh yes question. i would like to now read priya priya thank you for being here thank you for your beautiful comments earlier <laughs> and here's the question i have always been connected to languages and learn them easily. I feel like I have activated light language and I have been told it's Octorians. Is that a language? Are there galactic languages? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So each intergalactic civilization, just like the Earth humans, we do have what's called a linguistic system. Okay. Okay, it will be perceived as light languages because it <clears throat> contains a much higher level of vibrational tones and different light spectrum. It is a complex system of languages that will be perceived by the human senses as sometimes as tonalities, symbols, vibrations. It can be also encoding and so, much, and so forth. So each civilization, including the Octorians, we do have uh, a series of so-called languages that is very different from the linguistic field as recognized here on a 3D human language. Yeah. But if you feel that you have a natural ability for those, for the languages, even on this earth, it's just to show you that 
you may have it also an affinity for the other form of languages. So my recommendation, just embrace your gift and remain open to receive different form of languages that transcend beyond this earth. It is just as natural as telepathic communications, be able to heal yourself in time. Mm -hmm. You are simply relearning those natural gifts that seems to be so extraordinary for now. But it's a beautiful gift that you have, so cultivate it with trust. That's awesome. I love that. You want to do one more? Because you know I got tons of questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's from this from the same lady, Priya, and I think it's important what she's asking, okay. and then we can move forward. Yeah. She's asking also, is it important to know what the galactic beings look like or is that our mind just getting in the way? Mm. Mm. I like that question. I like that question as well. Yeah. So is it important to understand what they look like? I would say prior to attaching yourself to physical form, I would say it would be more important to understand and recognize their vibrational presence. Each intergalactic group has a very unique signature to them. Mm. a unique frequency presence okay. so first allow yourself to open your senses beyond the physical senses your multi-dimensional sensory points and your intuition to start to attune yourself to recognize each of these unique frequencies and then you can also ask as you get acquainted with that i like to know or to realize what physical appearance do you have? If it serves your highest and the greatest good, then it will simply reveal to you in time. Mm. But right now, it's not about what they look like. It's more in terms of what they, who they are, their essence. And that will allow you the gift and the ability to recognize if you are in the presence of enlightened beings or less enlightened, you can choose which one do you really want to interact with and for what purpose, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's powerful. So, okay, before I get back to my questions, we'll bring this up again later in the show, but just briefly <coughs> let the audience know the best way <clears throat> to reach out to you if they want to take some of your courses or learn about your, you know, DNA activation. Oh, hold on, I just lost you. Let's see. There we go. Okay, you're back. I lost you for a second. You there? Oh yes, I'm fully okay. here. So I was saying before uh, we get to the questions, I just want you to briefly share, and we'll, we'll repeat it towards the end again. If people want to reach out to you to ask you questions, to take your courses, to learn about your DNA activations, what's the best way to contact you? Well, thank you for asking, Eric. Um, the best way is really to the website, which is called Infinite Healing from the Stars.com. Nice. Everything is there. We do have a contact form. Okay. We also have the detail of you know, upcoming uh, conferences, places we're going to be in person, speaking at opportunities. Uh, we also have our online community with exclusive memberships. And usually what I do is I also post on the website the upcoming classes or like our beautiful Octarian holographic group monthly series. Mm. You can work with us. It is in a group setting at the same time we assign everyone an octarine guide throughout the series of activations and each month we reattune the frequencies and the topic we explore so that will be really amazing wow that sounds beautiful Vivian. i love that okay so you brought up a lot of things and you know I always have been a realist. I'm a native New Yorker. I got to keep it real, right? A lot of people are aware of, unfortunately, some people in power, some nefarious energies here on the planet, you know, planning things with Project Bluebeam. 
or even supposedly this, you know, thing that happened in Miami at the start of the new year. I remember the first 19 days of January were just like kind of like wild and crazy all over the place where they felt that some people felt that they saw um, aliens or some sort of beings in a mall in Miami. What are your thoughts about things like that? I mean, obviously, you know, we know that people have had real encounters. People have seen ships, met alien, all different stuff. But specifically, you know, what happened down in Miami, but then also where we could be potentially deceived one day based upon the higher forms of technology that are greater than we know, you know, in terms of the world that the power structures have and, you know, maybe plans of Project Blue Beam, which could be showing a fake alien invasion and things like that in the sky. What are your thoughts on those? I am really thrilled, Eric, that you're asking me those questions. So we can explore all of this with practicality and higher consciousness. Now, because this planet, Gaia, or beautiful Terra, has been really caught up into what we call a more of a denser third dimensional polarized and dualistic matrix reality. Mm -hmm. Not everything serves a purpose in terms of experience at a soul level. Are those more negative, manipulative group exist? Absolutely. We have been, we are very aware of it. Many councils or intergalactic councils, including associations of the world, uh, scientific world associations that coexists beyond your world are really, really aware of what has been happening on this planet for thousands of years. Yeah. Now, will they push, will they want and I when I say they is referring to the dark light polarity, yes. as we refer to them as, can they potentially push the idea that they want to manifest a false illusionary uh, ET invasion? Well, yes. Why? What would be the agenda behind it? What would be the goal? But for one thing is for you to fear your own galactic er origins and heritage. Yeah. Okay. That preventing the DNA from evolving, which just cannot be prevent. It's already in the making. Yeah. It's preventing also, you know, the many star seeds to have more um, trust, confidence, and the ability to open their channels to bring in their unique codes and the frequency that they represent from the various group that they come from. Uh, it will be also designed to create division where those who are in the spiritual or galactic community or woo-woo thinking versus those who feel they're more practical, more logic, down-to-earth, 3D thinking. That's another way to divide people. And instead of bringing a unity consciousness and encourage people to say, look, you always been part of a very diversified, large multiverse of life evolving in forms you have no idea, but it's easier to manipulate through movies or the idea of a blueprint project, or whether it's purple, red, black, whatever color you want to bring it. It really is of no consequence. <laughs> okay. I love that, baby. Yeah, I mean, it really is. <laughs> and <laughs> I noticed that everything seems to be blue. And why is that? It's another reason for this, because oh. blue, it's a powerful light spectrum frequency, very largely recognized by the human senses, connecting also with other intergalactic groups, archangels, and very powerful energies. So of course, we want to bring a label or a shadow able label around the color blue. It's also very intelligent on their part, but the point is moved. Why am I saying that with so much confidence? Mm -hmm. That's because just the last four years alone, it's been such a level of deep reawakening on a planetary conscious level globally. Yes. So what to do with this? Recognize it for what it is. Recognizing that fear indeed, Alana, well said, is the ultimate barrier, filters, the energy of fear, it's what's going to allow yourself to give up your power to this blue book or red or purple project they want to bring in <laughs> or an idea that's an alien evasion. Well, let, 
Well, let me tell you this from an intergalactic loving perspective. Mm -hmm. You've always been invaded. It's already done. <laughs> They're here. They've been manipulating for I'm thousands here. of years. So <laughs> the point is move, okay? There's no invasion. They've already done it. And that started with the Anarchy, and that started a long time ago. So today it is a time of reconciliation. Today it is a time of rejoicing in the reconnection as an equal being that you are with your star brothers and sisters. Yes, they are those who have entered your solar system, who have different agendas. Yes. Let me tell you one thing. There's many of us with our much more advanced technology who clear the pathway for you on a daily basis. So we remove those who come and think they can have a share of the pie of the earth, and we say no. There's no pie to share because the pie belongs to all of us. There's nothing to own. It, it is a time to reunification as opposed to a time of invasion that time has passed. It is a time of reunification. That's why I repeat again, feel the word. It is a time to return to embracing your galactic origins that has been encoded in you and as you for generations. So... That old paradigm of so-called invasion, threat, or cloning, or hybrid, or hybrid program, been been done, done. Oh yeah, already. You know, it's it's very three D matrix. But so let me let me ask you about this because I I've seen different uh, you know people speak on it and different thoughts, but I I don't have real uh, clarity on it, and I'm I wanted to ask you. Um, people mention multiple suns. People mention the black sun. And people also mention planet Nimburu in terms of, you know, during the pandemic 2020, they wanted us to be inside because they were putting up the 5G towers, but that also things were happening in the cosmos and in the galactic that energetically they didn't want us outside to tap into. What 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 can you share with us about that? And then even the concept of the sun and the moon and multiple suns. I mean, you've had people seeing things and, and showing really clear videos of what seems like more than one sun or seems like a black sun, things like that. Where do you um, where are your insights on things like that? Well, for one thing, you remind me of the scientific world on this planet rediscovering ghost particles and want to create or build technology around to analyze and understanding ghost particles. Now, out of blue, that becomes a reality. Well, before it was dismissed. Mm -hmm. So there's no such as ghost particle. It's just consciousness of energies has been simply now consciously recognized. That's an example of it. Okay. Your senses... Your, all of your senses and your sensory receptor points are shifting into a more multidimensional, more holographic way. Yeah. That means you start to see beyond the illusion of this projection reality. So you start to perceive certain celestial natural phenomena that has always been coexisting with your reality, but until today, it was simply, I would say, veiled from you. So mm -hmm. as you consciously evolving, your body template is shifting, becoming a more luminous template. It's going to return eventually a more cosmic celestial template. So it's going to be allowing all of you on the planet to be simply more in tune to understand that not only you, you have nothing to do with being a linear being, your senses is much more than physical. Your solar system may not be completely in the same configuration that your telescope has perceived from this 3D technology. Mm -hmm. and you start to understand that, like everything else, there's a depth dimensions, and there's also much more to it. So, yes, there may be multiple perceived versions of the sun. You can start to perceive the corridor, the solar corridor, that also lead to also the presence of the solar beings, the high councils, the sacred library also is part of the solar configuration, and the different planets that also being part of the solar system. Because the version of the solar system that you perceive is still to this day, is just a memory of an aspect of the way it was as in a 3D 
density. Your mm. solar system has shifted into a more 5D perspective or a fifth density or a fifth frequencies. So a lot of these planets are projecting different aspects of themselves, just like there are different versions of the Earth that is coexisting with you right now. So it is really part of that next level of shifting in perception. And you start to feel yourself, oh, I have multiple lifetime, or oh, I have different soul fractals. So what is the difference with different suns or different planet or different perception of light frequencies that may appear as darker, lighter, colored, white sun, bright sun, I mean, name it, you know, it's really, if you feel it, you're tapping finally into a much more richer, multidimensional aspect of realities. And I feel like it's all intertwined with this. So when you have this experience, or when you see those pictures, our invitation for you is cultivate within you, ask within your 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 wisdom of your heart, the ancient soul, this old being that you are, ask yourself, what is it am I really looking at? What is it am I truly rediscovering? Mm. And it is all part of the ascension. What ascension really means to our beloved perspective as thousands of years old being, it is simply a grand return. Yes. It's a rediscovery. I, I love when you say that. You know, I I tell my clients all the time, Vivian, and I, I let them know when we're doing the birth chart. And I have a couple of little sayings, but I introduce them to their chart. And I'm like, you know, like Vivian, meet Vivian, you know, and I let them know that this is the map of your life. This is what you chose before you came through your mother's portal. And your soul is here to evolve. And you're just really remembering all the ancient knowledge that's coming back up now through the mystery schools, whether it's the Akashic Records, the Book of Life, the, the Reiki, the astrology, gematria, numerology, the human design, the I Ching, Chinese astrology, all of it. We are really remembering and it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, our souls chose to be here at this time. So I let people know, like you said, there is no fear. You have to vibrate in love. You have to be uh, in gratitude and in truth and always be your true authentic self, right? These are the highest frequencies. And so I wanted to ask you, <clears throat> this one's a little bit more personal, but I know in my audience and just people in the world watching and even on the replay, I wasn't privy to this new world and I'm stepping into it now. For people who go through near-death experiences, what, um, you know, and every story and every experience is different, but a myriad of people afterwards go through um I guess an increase sometimes of different abilities or spiritual gifts, including myself. And so what is that process and, and why does that happen? Is it something that's a soul contract, you know, that you agreed upon before you came here? Or is it something that plays out to evolve your gifts and abilities and soul you know, here on, on earth and having this experience? It's a fantastic question, Eric. So I would say all of the above, and I'll tell yeah. you, let's explore this. Yeah. Yes, it is part of your soul design, as we call it. It's part of your sacred soul blueprint, knowing that a near that experience will increase and enhance your abilities as part of your journey. So it is um, my understanding that through a sacred life journey a soul will be given certain doorways mm. to be able to reevaluate their soul design what to reevaluate where are they on their journey and sometimes the soul says look we have you've already reached what you need to learn we're giving you an opportunity to transmute beyond this biological physical experience so there's some doorways that will be opening windows mm. i've gone through a few of those windows but of course, I chose to come back because I have more work to do. 
Yes. And so, <laughs> and I know because you and I have spoken before our beautiful time together and many other people like you has been going through a near that experience. So the body will be declared as there's no more life, but your soul go on experience remembering you're simply exiting temporally this physical matrix reality and you're returning to your natural state and and depending on especially if you hold the light then light welcomes you but if you hold all of fear then it might be reflected to you to understand so you can learn from it release yourself from this fear energy so when you learn from your own unique experience known yeah. as a near that experience you come back with a greater ability to remembering not only what this life is truly about, what who we are truly about, and helping you increasing the next level of your ability. She can help more, be of service, bring forward, right? Whether it's to experience the sharing gifts, inspiration, helping many more people to step out of the confinement of these mental construct fear-based energies yeah. right projection what is it that's really holding you back to remembering and living your life truly as an empowered divine being as opposed to feel a powerless with no core of worthiness human being it's like no it's the opposite so i feel that it's when you're given such a huge opportunity to go on the other side and come back in your body and says, I'm still going to be here for my family, my friends, client, and I'm going to be a tremendous source of inspiration. But it's also helping you at the soul level to accelerate your own evolution. Mm. So imagine the light that you can carry more, the love, the wisdom, the vibration, the conscious choice you can make. It changes everything. Yeah, I really feel that. And it's funny how you, the way that you said it, um, it was, it, it just rings so true. Even into a basic level, um, you know, I mentioned that I was from New York and I'm a hip hop artist and MC, and I recorded two studio albums and a few mixtapes. And I was like, you know, yeah, I'm older now, but so what? I, you know, it's who I am. I love it. I love, you know, rhyming and poetry and music and, and speaking truth. And I said, I'm going to do one more album. And I got this title. And I got this title in like maybe, I don't know, 2017, 2018, a few years back. And I didn't understand, you know, I was like, okay, this is cool. It was a little wordy, but I was like, okay, this is deep. I didn't understand. And the title of my future third album is God Told Me to Tell You. Oh. And 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 then I went through my coma experience for 40 days and 85 days in the hospital and survived all that I did and all that I went through. And then I just had to laugh to myself, Vivian, and said, wow, <laughs> now I know why I have that title. God told me to tell you. So I'm looking forward to doing that third and final album. And boy do I have so much to share now, no. you know? And it's just so fascinating. And um, I just, I marvel, you know? And I wanted to ask you, um, in terms of some of the work that you do, and I and I think that we had discussed that maybe you wanna share a little uh, a guided meditation or something with the collective and maybe, you know, bring people in to the, to the window of some of your courses and your DNA activation and helping people find their, their light bodies and their true sovereign selves. Um, you know, I just want to give you the floor for that. If you want to, you know, take us on a little grounding or guided meditation, but also to share with us, you know, what, if people are curious, what, you know, I mean, they may want to try to do a little bit of everything with you, but you know, what, what is the energy now for the collective that if someone is really like, okay, I, I need to know more. I want to be sovereign. I want to activate my DNA. I want to, you know, be more in the fifth dimension light energy. 
let us know what you have to offer for everyone. To oh, help. Thank you so much. So inspirational, everything that you shared, Eric, and it brings so much depth and meaning to this a very uplifting conversation and even beyond. So I want just to acknowledge that and thank you for this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So working with us is really giving everybody an opportunity to work with magnificent masters of light. Octarians are known as one of the most advanced intergalactic ancient civilizations. And we have been really working um, and on with many human beings, the planet. We're here to really support your re-ascension. And so I'm a cosmic bridge for this, working with many other delegations like the Andromedans, the High Council of Lyra. Mm. We work also with the spiritual hierarchy with the Earth under the supervision of Master Sananda and Master Sanat Kumara. So we really um, bring this ancient remembrance in accelerating your journey so you can also join again the many beautiful intergalactic communities that you're part of and even beyond. So my mission is really here for the, t the future timeline that we are reaching now. And one of the best way to work with us, to learn, to experience the true essence of what we have to offer is through the membership that we have. And we have a beautiful online community called the Universal Octarian Community. Mm -hmm. And we have light-minded people from all over the world, uh, from Australia, Germany, UK, and we, across the US, Canada. We have people from everywhere and the level of dedication. We support each other through project, retreat, classes, events, the group healing every month. And we do so much and the level of transformation is transcending of how much members are really much more in their power and life-changing for them and then in terms they they become very powerful co-creator in their own uh, community and everywhere around the world so we're creating a beautiful world map that network that also support gaia and every life form here so that would be your best way to connect with us is to the membership and i'm going to be developing new programs i just finished um recently our Octurian Healing Arts program, which is three months. Wow. Uh, we, we have people from over 20 countries like, uh, joining us. And it's really a hybrid program between teaching, learning, healing, transmission, and a deep dive into the inner journey. So we'll, we'll create more of this program. We have more teachings to come. But right now, let's come together, yeah. uh, as we said. And it's just a short, beautiful activation. So if you would... Close your eyes. Allow yourself to bring yourself in the here and now. Feel that you're calling upon <coughs> all of your energy. <coughs> Feel that you're calling upon all of your presence with the intention to be here and now. To already feel your breath going deeper. Can you feel and welcome the sacred breath of life within you. As you honor your breath, you honor the life that you are experiencing every day. And remember that nothing is in vain or mundane anymore. Everything is an opportunity to rise to the next level of consciousness embracing more and more the light that vibrates in you and as you to understand and recognize that only one person, you alone, have such a huge impact on a global level, on a planetary, planetary level. You make a huge difference. Your life, your presence is truly celebrated by Gaia, by the universe, by all of your intergalactic enlightened brothers and sisters. You're the one who has said yes to this journey. You are the one who have come boots on the ground to make such a positive impact 
in this world. You becoming the leaders of this reascension timeline, the co-creators, the ones who are making history. You also becoming the example for many other own worlds, other civilizations, other forms of life who are about to embrace the same level of evolution and expansion. So take the time right now to breathe into your body, to feel this sacred life force energy, to feel how much your body is sacred, your physical template hold the divine spark of light that is you, to feel how much energy and wisdom you hold in your heart and at a soul level. Allow yourself to move beyond the limitation of the 3D mind that asks questions but there's no response. Feel and welcome the opening of this inner conduit, these channels of sacred communication and communion with your higher self, your divine self, with your solar system, with the expansion of the solar presence and the omnipotence and omnipresence of all there is. And to know deep in your heart, in your mind, in your subconscious mind, in your intelligent field, that you are a very important part of that all there is. And all there is, is a part of you now. So let's take a deep grounding breath, just feel your roots expanding and release, release this expansion of light. Yes, beautiful. Cultivate that presence. Embody more and more every day. This conscious groundedness as much as you're expanding in wisdom and light. Trust in your ability. Feel your worthiness. You are unique in every way. Celebrate, embrace that uniqueness. It is a part of your strength, your courage, and your divine presence. And so it is. Mm. Mm. Yes, and so it is. That was wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, listen, I can already tell you, you have to come back again. There's so many things that I just, I just would love to explore with you, you know? And I think that, well, I don't think, I know that this was very powerful for the audience and for those who will watch the replay in the future. And um, I just am filled with such joy and gratitude. It is just a pleasure and honor to have you on the show and to finally meet you. And, you know, I, I want and I want to encourage everyone out there, you guys in the chat and people watching, mm -hmm. you know, what Vivian is sharing with us and explaining to us we we're here at this time for a purpose and a reason and that means we're built for this the world has been a little kind of wild and kind of crazy the last couple of years but that's okay we are here for this journey and for this upgrade and this ascension. And so like we mentioned earlier and we spoke about and, and she was explaining to us about the connection to Gaia. And as I mentioned, the Jupiter, Uranus and Taurus and the Saturn and Neptune and Mars and Pisces. And for us to do the work, and it's not about perfection. It's about each day taking a step forward you may have to start at a level and 
you know, here on Earth School, I always mention Vivian, some people may be 10th, 11th, 12th grade, and some people may be kindergarten, first grade. There's no judgment. It's okay. Mm -hmm. If you need to meditate three minutes a day, then that's what you do. Some people can do 15, 30. Some people do an hour and hours. But I just encourage everyone to try to live right from your heart chakra, to be your true authentic self, to have love and gratitude every day, but to, to, to take, take an active part, right? To do something, take a step, ground in nature, connect back to the earth and Mother Gaia, the trees and the plants and the animals. Listen to them, their songs, their singing. You can hear it, right, Vivian? It's like yes. even, even after the eclipse, but just in general, mm. there's a new song that you hear. I hear every day from the birds in my backyard. It's beautiful. Tap in, talk to them, commune with them. Yes. And, and know that we can all do our part. And, you know, that little three minutes, it's, it's something. So don't get overwhelmed. Do not. I always tell my clients, retire from negative self-talk, right? Our subconscious mind is listening, right? Exactly. We've got to be, I always say, maniacal, intentional about the positivity. It's hard. We live in this world. This, you know, but, but understand, we have got to choose that new world, that new energy, that new vibration, that new frequency. And Vivian, thank you for being here to help us all to, to honor that, to recognize that, to remember that, and to vibrate in that in our, in our daily lives. And that's a wonderful gift. And that's, I know that's what I'm here for, you know, and I am honored and humbled to be of service to the collective and um and it's wonderful and it's wonderful to be sharing these types of experiences with someone like you as well vivian so thank you for all the work that you do and will continue to do in the future oh you are most welcome eric absolutely and it's as you can see it's a collaborative effort it really is when we come together we can uplift and transmute mountains beyond what we've been told or program to believe so of course it will be my pleasure to come back and continuing another level of very inspiring conversation, activations, and in everything that comes with it. So thank you so much for having me today. It's such a joy to connect with you, your uniqueness, your presence. It's really amazing. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We will be discovering just in the perfect timing this conversation and what you need the most. So trust yourself more and know that just let us release together the old structures. Let's release what no longer serve and just been holding us back as a civilization, as a race. And let's let the, the old structure be transmuted into new ones. So thank you so much again, Eric, and so much love to you, your family, and everyone tuning in Thank you so much. Now, you guys remember, share your website again, everything, her website, and emails in the description. And please, once the show is over, come, come back, comment and like. It helps it grow an algorithm. And share this to a friend. Share this boldly and bravely to the people that you think may not be open to this and enjoy it. There may be a message in here that just kind of just sparks their heart and gets them to ponder or question and makes them a little bit more spiritually curious, right? Sometimes we just have to just share things with people. So come back in about 30 seconds, like and comment, hit the like button, but come back and comment and share it with a friend on your social media and all that stuff. And I really appreciate the audience and everyone coming and um, share your website with them one last time, please. Of course, so my website is called Infinite Healing from the Stars.com. So Infinite Healing from the Stars.com. I love it. That's so beautiful. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This was episode 199 mm. with Ms. Vivian Chauvet. 
on Knowledge is Love Astrology Podcast. Have a good night, everybody. Vibrate from your heart.